And we're back with some more Dysons for a program. And today I thought we'd start off with a little bit of demolition. This is our starting system. I never covered it for this playthrough because I covered it the previous two or three and then I didn't want to bore everyone with it. But we're still having a few ships come back here occasionally to pick up random resources that I haven't cleaned up yet. So I thought we'd do a, a little bit of deconstruction. Now the great thing about this is once your inventory is full, stuff just starts raining out of the sky. It's actually kind of cool looking. So, I was just going to do this all on the side, but getting to watch just the entire map getting covered in what's essentially just lots of little colourful blocks doesn't seem that bad. It does not demolish the towers when you do it this way, but I'm kind of okay with it. <laughs> it doesn't do good things to the frame rate, but this... Yes, I could get used to this. I kind of want to do this now to our planet when we're... our main planet when we're done, or all of our main planets, the ones that are absolutely covered in buildings. You could turn the place into sort of a Lego nightmare hell. You can just imagine coming down on your bare feet and walking on these. Yeah, it'd probably be pretty... Oh, God! Oh, and demolishing hydrogen, it seems. Where is it? This here puts out a whole bunch of hydrogen when you demolish them. Yes, yes, you do want to demolish that. And you'll see there's less just, like, blobs of this stuff everywhere. Yeah, frame rate's not doing too well. Ah, give me another few minutes to play around. Would you look at that? Looks like someone spilled some pixie dust or glitter or something all over the planet. Ah, I wonder if you could crash the game this way. No, no, no we'll, we'll do that another day. Alright, and now to get rid of all of it and magically make it disappear. And hopefully that'll give us some of our frames back. The only thing I'm not destroying is all this antimatter. It feels wrong to destroy that much antimatter. In fact, destroying everything we just did also felt a bit wrong, but you know what? It needed to be done. Anyway, I'm going to go demolish a few more planets, or uh, yeah, the home planet here, I think, where there's a little bit of a mall. We're going to get rid of all of this just to free up as many frames as possible for the next step of our, our playthrough. I'm on my way home, and it's just kind of fun to look at our planet at the moment. Our planet is a little bit active. Uh, just just a wee bit. You can see the, the blue solar sails getting fired into orbit and you can also see, oh, there's, there's a rocket launch going on right now, that sort of weird halo thing that pops out. Our Dyson Sphere is actually doing pretty well. What's our Dyson Sphere at at the moment? 32.2 gigawatts, but solar sail production is way down. I think we, we need, need, need to buff solar sail production. In fact, I think we're going to take an entire planet and just dump a bunch of solar sail production onto it. Probably the outermost ring. Yeah, we can go to the outermost one. Where is it? Oh, wow. Uh, maybe not the outermost one. That one looks... Yeah, system four. Or five? Yeah, we'll grab one of those and we'll mount a whole bunch of cannons on it and we'll just spam the whole place with lots and lots of solar sails. I want to get this Dyson Sphere finished so we can start doing power production or bulk power production with antimatter. This planet here is the one we're going to use for Dyson Sphere... Dyson Sail production. And Dyson Sails are actually pretty handy to make, so I think we'll go for about 5,000... And 5,000 sales per minute should give us more than enough to fill in the Dyson Sphere in a reasonable amount of time. Theoretically? Actually, actually, let's double it. Let's make it 10,000. We'll make 10,000 sales and we'll do it on this planet. It should be fairly straightforward. All you need is iron, copper, and stone. That is it. And so I've tapped into all the places on this planet so far. We should have just about enough. I even stuck down a ring of uh, these solar collectors. What do you call them? Yeah, whatever. There to provide us with enough power. I think... Uh, I think this should be fairly straightforward. Let's find a nice big flat open spot. Oh, there. There's perfect. We'll make it, use that spot right there and build up our production. All right, this is, is a little interesting. What we got here is 222, uh, well, 223 assemblers to make 10,000 sails. Not that bad at all. And if you look down under copper and iron, we only need about, what, 83 iron plate, 83 furnaces for that, 41 for the copper. Not that bad. Until you look at glass. We need 500 glass furnaces and 16 and a half belts of stone. Okay, that's a lot of stone. I didn't realize that solar sails were pretty much 90% stone. That's incredible. Okay, let's uh, let's get to work on this. I have started tapping into all of the stone patches on this planet. I think we got about 57 million stone on this planet, so it might actually be okay, though we may have to import some from elsewhere as well. Okay, let's, uh, let's go about building 10,000 solar sails per minute. Iron and copper wise, we don't actually need a full 120, but I'm going to do it anyway, because at this point I just, yeah, we want to go with a sort of a consistent approach and yeah, there we go. It's it's just simpler to do it this way, I think. And then we just got to do the same for the copper. Oh, and I do have the game running at triple speed. It just makes, uh, it makes filling things up a lot simpler. Oh, we should go over our science as well. Our science is doing really well. And done. That should be all the iron and copper we need. 
Next up, I'm thinking we'll do the green circuits. The green circuits are going to be very important. And oh, I forgot to put in copper plate there, didn't I? Uh, copper plate for you and iron plate for you. We've set these up so that they can pull resources from further away, just so that, we, well, with their logistics vessels and with some warpers, they can pretty much pull them from anywhere in case this planet runs out of resources, which it probably will eventually. Uh, down here, we'll throw in the green circuits, but first, let's just check out science production. Now, if you look here, we're actually doing solid at the moment, but there's been some inconsistencies, let's just say. This is a reactive the science, and it's been stabilizing, going wonky here and there as I find bottlenecks, but we've managed to iron out most of the kinks so far, and maybe it'll stay. It'll stay stable this time. The last hour has actually been pretty good. It's slowly trending upwards, so we should be golden to stay in 1,020 science per minute. Well, for the foreseeable future, though... Yeah, there's probably going to be a bug somewhere. There's always a bug somewhere. Uh, green circuit production, I think, next. Green circuits are just stupidly straightforward. Iron and copper goes in, green circuits comes out the other side. Or what do they call them in this game? Circuit boards. Yeah, they're green circuits. Don't, don't pretend you're not Factorio here. Come on. All right, with that done, that leaves us prisms. Okay, prisms and... Oh, we're going to need some graphite. Actually, maybe get the graphite out of the way with first, because prisms are just going to be a mass production affair. This here is what our graphene production facility is going to look like. Very small and very similar to the other one, though I have made some changes based on experience with our previous setup. The problem we're going to face here is we've got to pull in fire ice from a bunch of gas giants. Sometimes they're pretty far away, and what'll happen is if you're running these max length, as in with 30, uh, 30 of these in a row, it just can't pull in enough fire ice fast enough, namely because of just the travel distances involved. It gets so ridiculous. I mean, eh. Let's just have a quick look at our system, and you'll notice the uh, absolutely ludicrous amount of ships running about the place. It looks like a solid V formation of just ships going everywhere, and you'll see the odd ones running off into the rest of space just to pull back more fire ice. They're going off to get fire ice, or maybe the occasional hydrogen. You know, some of them are even going back to our gas giant in our home system. And all of these, they're, they're quite some distance to it. 13 light years, 12 light years, 7 light years, 10 light years, all of these places are a bit of a distance. So what we've done here is made sure that well, they should be able to provide enough to keep this going. If we made this max length, it wouldn't work out. On our home planet there, or on the science planet, where we're pumping out that 1,000 science per minute, on that planet, I had to set up some intermediate stations, as in a bunch of just these, just transport towers nearby that were pulling in fire ice to locally supply it. It was the only way we could get it to uh, keep them up at max production. That was one of the production kinks in our science. But once we've got one of them up, we can just copy-paste it and put down a second one. Nope, oh, wait, right about there. Right, and that should be all of the graphene we need on this place. One potential problem is the hydrogen. This produces hydrogen and there's nothing on this planet that burns it. So I think for the time being we're going to let it leave it at remote supply and if it's not harvested fast enough what we can start doing is just putting down some thermal generators here and burning the hydrogen off. When it comes to making these prisms I think we're going to take a slight departure from standard. Uh, the reason being is they're all just one item. Um, you see, stone gets turned into glass, glass gets turned into prisms. There's no other components we need to add here. So I'm thinking what we'll do is we'll sort of combine these all into one build so that we can churn out the prisms. Uh, all we need really need to know is you need 30 glass buildings can set, will consume one full line of stone. And then we can just basically dump them in this way. 120 glass, or which is one full block of smelting, that will be able to feed 27 of these. We'll just, you know what? Show don't tell. I'll show you the way I want to stick this together so that they're all in one tower and it just it should save time and power. All right, this is what I meant by uh, combining them all into one. All the stone is going to get chucked out of here and dipped into the furnaces and turned into glass. But instead of going back up this way, back into the tower like it used to, it will continue straight on down the end and shoot out the bottom. When it shoots out the bottom, it goes right into these prism into prism production. And you'll notice here these are just running down here. And those three actually go into it, just so we could avoid some belt fooey. And then it all comes in here and pumps into these. And that's it. It should be a simple and efficient way to get all of these running without having to say... Normally what we'd end up doing is having little logistics robots running back and forth between these two towers, wasting a bunch of power for no reason. Actually, why is that not... Hmm. One second, let me, make sure, make sure, let's, let me make sure this is all balanced. This is just about right. We're actually... We have a little bit of an extra machine more than we need. But that's fine, I actually like this. This works out sort of perfectly. All we need now to do to do now is produce five more of these. This is gonna to eat to a lot of transport belt, uh, just general equipment. This is, even with the blueprint tool, this is an awful lot of printing at one time. I don't think I've managed to print, well, over 500 furnaces in just a short period of time before. Yeah, let's hope this works out for uh, some nice railgun firing of solar sails. 
little bit of a cut forward here while we throw in, well, the last of them. We threw in the uh, the photon combiners over here. Though, the, there is actually two recipes for the photon combiners, but we're going to use the, well, the current one we're using because it doesn't require any special resources and we've got plenty of iron and copper. Well, iron, copper and stone, we have oodles of the stuff everywhere. So we might as well just use them. It takes up a little bit more infrastructure space, but we're going to have 10,000 solar sails here and we won't be able to just use it for here. When we move to other planets, we can just ship the solar sails there and fire them off into a Dyson Swarm or Dyson Sphere at the next location. Just a handy way to use. We can use these later on. They're not going to be dead weight once we're finished here. All right, now we have to decide where we're going to put our ring of cannons or how many we're going to need. I'm not actually sure how many we're going to need, so let's leave ourselves lots of space. Let me pick a spot. So doing some math on these, we can launch, each one of these can launch 20 solar sails per minute, assuming they can see the orbit at all times. Of 10,000 solar sails, that means we need about 500 railguns. So 500 railguns should be able to launch all of the... Well, they won't always be in, in range of the Dyson Swarm, so... A thousand, I suppose? Actually, let's make it about 750. We'll put down 750 and see how that works out. I don't think it will be able to keep up, but... Meh. We're, we'll give it a try and see. If the hard part's going to be fitting it all in on this planet. There's so much water here. I really should have picked a... Uh, a planet with more land mass, but then again, all of those ones end up being production centers anyway, so we'll see how this works out. We're, we're gonna need a bigger planet, there's just not enough space here. This is what we've done so far. Uh, there's just a whole ring of turrets all the way around. We might as well start plugging these in now just to see what it looks like. I'm really, really curious for obvious reasons. So, all we've got is a few random towers scattered about the place. We'll make those local demand and they'll start drawing in lots and lots of solar sails which they should hopefully spit out onto the cannons. We had a local demand there as well, and I think there's one more. Ah, yes. This one here. Local demand. Perfect. Now we're going to see if any of them start firing. I've changed the orbital radius that they're targeting, so hopefully it'll give them a better angle. Eh, uh, anything? Ah, there we go. Much better. All right, so that kind of goes out along here curves all the way around and this goes on it passes about 90 cannons because after 90 cannons there's a potential for it to eat an entire line uh, though yeah they're not making it very far oh my god they're just getting consumed i suppose it'll take a little bit of while for the whole place to saturate now give me a minute while i find a good vantage point for this actually that is actually a pretty good vantage point right there Ooh, pretty hmm yeah give me a moment i want to see what it's doing to our dyson sphere yeah, we're definitely going to need a bigger planet. You can see only a percentage of them are firing. Uh, we're getting about 2,000 solar sails per minute, which, it's not enough. I think we're going to need a whole bunch more cannons to make this. I'd want to be at least launching 5,000. The remaining spares we can at least have for when we next build, when we go for Big Blue and our Big Dyson Swarm, or Big Dyson Sphere. Uh, let me play around with this just a little bit more. We made some uh, productivity improvements here, and we're up to a consumption of about 38, 39,000 solar sails per minute. What we did was we covered the entire equator of the planet and a couple of rows of them. And it looks pretty effective. It looks like our planet is just turned into some sort of flying ship that's shooting things. That's pretty cool. Also, if we go into the Dyson Sphere, Pro Dyson Sphere Overlook, it looks sort of chaotic from here when you see it that way. But if you go up above, you can actually see the trails going out. It, it's sort of like a... Ah, oh, damn it, what was that? Almost a seashell pattern? A spiral pattern? They're all going out. Or you can look at it from the bottom. Same thing, you can see it actually rotating out towards all the locations to start filling in the sails. That is pretty cool. I, I think we'll just leave it at that. That's more than enough. It'll fill it in, it'll take a little while, but we're already up to 43 gigawatts, and I want to get on with power. I want to get on with power production, and I think leaving this in the background, it'll fill it up after a while. It might take a, a it might take up several, 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 several hours, but I can leave this run overnight or something. What are you up to here? Oh my... Yeah, there's an awful lot of cell point missing. There's 30,000 cell points required in that one node right there. So I'm assuming they're all roughly about the same. Yeah, yeah, never mind. Okay, that could take some time. And that, unfortunately, is going to be the end of today's episode. This game is just a hell of a time sink. Every time you start playing it, it's just like, oh, I'll just do this little thing, and that little thing, and this little thing, and next thing you know, it's been the entire day's gone, and you've only got, what, 15 minutes of footage to show for it? Anyway, I'll do a, a little bit more work on this in the background, and I'm planning on doing, I think I should do a really big time lapse with this uh, solar sail launch. It looks beautiful. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed and good luck.